You are listening to Rabbi Arya Wolby of Torch in Houston, Texas. This is the Thinking Talmudist Podcast. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Thinking Talmudist Podcast. We are on page 98A, towards the bottom of the page, in Tractate Sanhedrin. The Gemara discusses a verse that refers to the redemption, and that is in Isaiah, it says, Ani Hashem bi'ito achishana. I, Hashem, in its time, I will hasten it. And that's referring to the coming of Messiah. The Gemara now expa- explains. Omar Rab Alexandri, Alexandri says, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi Rami, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi noted a contradiction. Ksiv bi'ito, it says on one hand, that in its time, which implies that the redemption will occur in its preordained time, v'ksiv achishena, and it is also written, on the other hand, I will hasten it, which implies that God will bring the redemption before its preordained time. So is it at a set time that the Messiah will come, or is it hastened and it's going to come sooner than its ord- preordained time? So Rabbi Shua Malevi resolves the contradiction as follows. He says, Zachu achishano, loi zachu be'ito. If the Jews are deserving, then Hashem says, I will hasten the redemption. But if they are not deserving, then the redemption will come in its time. So what do we know? We see here that really God already preordained the time that Mashiach will come. But if we are able to merit a speedier, earlier time for Mashiach to come, then Hashem will hasten that time. But that's only if we merit towards. Another contradiction posed by Rabbi Yishuv ben Levi, Omer Rabbi Alexandri, Rabbi Alexandri said, Rabbi Yishuv ben Levi, Rami, Rabbi Yishuv ben Levi noted a contradiction. Ksiv, va'aru im anane shmayo, Kvar enosh at oto. On the one hand, it is written, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a man came, which implies that the Messiah will come swiftly. Viksivin, it says right after that, Oni viroichev al chamor. But on the other hand, it is written that a humble man riding on a donkey, which implies the Messiah will come sluggishly on a donkey. Donkeys are not known to be the fastest of animals. So Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi resolves the contradiction as follows. He says, If the Jewish people are deserving, Messiah will arrive with the clouds of heaven. You'll suddenly see Messiah in the clouds. But But if they're not deserving, then Mashiach will come riding on a donkey. Mashiach will come riding on a donkey. So, the Gemara cites a related exchange. Amar lei, Shavur Malkul Shmuel, King Shapur, said to Shmuel, Amrisu Mashiach al Chamra Asai, is it true that you're saying that Messiah will come on a donkey? Ishadar lei susyo barko de isle. I will send him my finest horse. Why on a donkey? Let me send him a horse. Amrle mi islach bar chivar gavno. He says, do you have a horse of a hundred colors? Do you have a horse of a hundred colors? No, you don't. So then it's not going to help your horse that you're trying to attempt. Right? Your finest horse will not be as splendid as Messiah's donkey. Shmuel does not mean this seriously, obviously. Not a unicorn. He said it only to brush off Shapur's mockery by responding in kind. Okay, so let's just talk for a second here about this donkey. So we see here, and the Gemara is going to talk about it a little bit further, that Mashiach is going to come riding on a donkey. Now again, this is only if they don't merit. If they do merit, how's Mashiach going to be presented to the world? 
in the clouds. But if not, Mashiach is going to come riding on a donkey. So this is a very interesting Gemara. It's one of one of my favorite Gemaras. Talking about Mashiach coming on a donkey. Why is Mashiach coming on a donkey? What does Mashiach have to do with a donkey? And you know what? We're living in a real world today. We're in 2023. It's almost 2024. In six days, seven days, we're going to be in 2024. We have a lot of fine technology. Right, doctor? We have a, a an electric Lexus that he can come in. He can come on a private jet. Mashiach can come in many, many different ways. But what's the choice of the Almighty? The Mashiach should come on a donkey. Why? So our sages, our sages tell us an amazing thing. What is the word chamor? Chamor means materialism. In fact, when you want to call someone silly, people use the term like a donkey. Why? Because it has no character. You see, a horse has character. It has even, if you say, what does a horse do? Look at it, it has a character. The donkey has no character. The donkey just schleps. It's just materialism. It's just a block of meat. Put something on its back and it'll schlep it. It doesn't have any character. It's pure materialism. What the Gemara says here, if you look, you remember the words that we just read, it says that Mashiach is going to come riding on a donkey. Why on a donkey? Because when you ride on something, you have control over something. Mashiach is going to come in a generation where we have no control over our materialism. Mashiach is going to come in a time where he's going to be able to teach us what it means to be Reichev al hachamor, to be in control of the Chomer. The Chomer is the materialism. Where he's going to teach us that we shouldn't be controlled by our materialism. Our materialism shouldn't, de- shouldn't be defining who we are, but rather we should define the, fer- the materialism. We should be in control of it and only that way are we going to be successful in really accepting Mashiach because it's not about it being just on a donkey or coming on a private jet or coming any other way. Mashiach is going to teach us the most important lesson that this generation needs. And if there's any generation that needed a lesson about control over materialism to this generation. So it's even more accurate than we originally thought. Mashiach is going to come riding on materialism. How much of our lives is controlled by our materialism? We can't do certain things because our house, our car, our this, our that, our money. So we're limited by our materialism instead of giving us us all the opportunity in the world sometimes we're missing those opportunities because we're so limiting our potential because of our materialism so this is just a short a small little piece here on the power of this one little thing on the Gemara, the Gemara is like saying here that Mashiach is going to come riding on a donkey. It also it's not it's not the typical. You can you can become riding a donkey. On means you're in control of it. Well, it's still we're doing well enough that we deserve to have Mashiach. It's still uh, you know, it's still a big a big a big blessing. We'll take him however we get him, right? Because uh, what's the purpose of Mashiach coming? What's the purpose of the coming of Mashiach? Not only there'll be peace in the world, not only there won't be war anymore. I mean, look what's going on in this world. Look what's going on in our world. How many more wars, wars can we handle? 
It's crazy. It's un- it's unreal what we're experiencing. It's going to be Mashiach is riding on a donkey. Mashiach is riding on a donkey. The problem is the world doesn't know that there is a God. We've mentioned this before. But part of our beautiful prayers, the end of our prayers that we recite daily, we see two incredible paragraphs in Aleno. But the second paragraph talks about the coming of Messiah. Therefore we put our hope in you, Hashem, our God, that we may soon see your splendorous might to remove the testable idolatry from, from this earth and false gods will be utterly cut off to perfect the universe through the almighty sovereignty. This is talking about the coming of Messiah. Messiah is going to break away all the idolatry, all of the confusion that the world doesn't know right from wrong, doesn't know which way to turn. Then all humanity will call upon your name, Hashem, to turn all earth's wicked toward you. All the world's inhabitants will recognize and know that to you every knee should bend, every tongue should swear. Before you, Hashem, our God, they will bend every knee and cast themselves down and they will render homage to the glory of your name. And they will all accept upon themselves the yoke of your kingship. And you will reign over them soon and eternally. For the kingdom is yours. And you will reign for all eternity in glory. As it is written in your Torah, Hashem will reign for all eternity. Hashem will reign for all eternity. And as it is, it is said, Hashem will be king over all the world. On that day, what's that day? The day when Messiah comes. On that day, Hashem will be one and his name will be one. Because there won't be splinters. There won't be any doubts on who God is. It'll be so clear. So Messiah Sometimes people have an interesting idea of what Messiah is going to bring. What, what's going to happen in the time of Messiah? Very simple. We're going to have clarity. We're not going to have any doubts. We're not sure. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe not. Are they right? Are they wrong? <laughs> Anything could be. One thing is for sure. When Mashiach comes, there will be 100% clarity. In fact, it says that the, the, the brightness of the sun will be taken out of its pouch. The sun will be taken out of its pouch. Sun, we're not going to be able to handle the brightness of the sun. What's the idea of the brightness? What, what, is it, what is that metaphor? The idea is that you're going to have so much light, you're going to understand the difference between light and dark. Right now, we look at dark and we're like, oh, it's so light. People wait. Holiday season, people wait for sales. People wait for sales. They want to buy a new television. They're very excited. They buy a new television. They buy a new this. They buy a new that. Is that bringing light? Or is that bringing darkness? Is it connecting them more or distancing them? That's the real question. Is it going to be used as a tool to bring Hashem into this world? Or to remove us and distance us from the recognition that Hashem is there, everywhere? And that's our goal. Our goal is to have that clarity even prior to Messiah. Because the more we are able to do that already on our own and bring that light to the world, bring that recognition to every single creation, the more merits, the more deserving will be of that coming of Messiah. So the Gemara now continues. So, typically I don't talk about this in public, but anybody who's no longer alive cannot be the Messiah. Okay? Only someone who's living, someone who's in flesh and blood, 
they can be the Messiah. Someone who passed on to the next world can no longer be the Messiah. So it's unfortunate if there is a group who runs around claiming that their leader, that their rabbi is the Messiah after he has passed on, that's uh, very delicately dangerous. Uh, it, it, it's dangerously on the verge of idolatry, of heresy. So I'm not accusing anyone, God forbid, of doing that or of saying that. But if someone were to, it's very dangerous. I don't know what people believe. You know, it's like I don't know what's in people's bank accounts. I don't know what people think. I don't know what people believe. Right? Each one of us in our own lives needs to be self aware and, and, and declare our own commitment to Hashem and not to any other deity, force, power, or leader. Right. So, you know, we didn't claim this even on Moses. We didn't claim him to be the Messiah. Moses was the greatest leader ever. The greatest Jewish leader ever. Samuel, King David, Solomon. I mean, there's never been a declaration of any of them as being the, the Messiah. We had some false messiahs. So I think it's very, we have to be very, very cautious when people use that term about any individual who has passed on from this world. It's very dangerous. Even someone who is living, we don't just walk around declaring people as the Messiah. All right, the Gemara now continues. A third teaching, a third teaching from Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Ashkach Lelio. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi met with Elijah the prophet. Dehavi kaime apitcho de ma'arto de Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai. Where did he meet Elijah the prophet? At the, he was standing at the entrance of the cave of Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai. Omer le Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai asked him, Asino la alma de Asi, will I enter the world to come? Omer le, he said to him, Im yirtze oden azeh, if this Lord wishes it. Omer Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai, Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai said, Shnaim ra'isi, I saw two people. But I heard the voice of three. I saw two, but I heard the voice of three. Omer Lehi Bishor Malevi asked Elijah, Amos Osi Mashiach, when will the Messiah come? Omer Lehi Elijah answered him, Zil Shailili Dide, go and ask the Messiah himself. Go ask him. Vehecha Yossi, from Bishor Malevi asked, and where, where is he hanging out? Where can I go find this Messiah fellow to ask him when he's coming? Apitcho de Karto. Elijah responded at the gate of the city. Now, we know that the Talmud is telling us actual facts, but it's also giving us an analogy for us to learn from. What does it mean at the entrance of the city? What does it mean at the entrance of a city? That means he's ready. He's here. He's about to come. Now, as soon as he gets the notification from the Almighty, it's time to reveal your true powers to the world. Then Messiah puts on his cape. No, he doesn't have to have a cape, but he's, his powers shine and he's able to bring that clarity to the world. So, Umai Simone, Rabbi Shua ben Levi asked Elijah the prophet, and what is his distinguishing feature? Yosif bene aniye soivle chaloim. He says, Elijah, Elijah responded, he is sitting among the paupers afflicted with disease. Vikulon shoru vasire bechad zimna. All of them untie and tie all of their bandages at the same time. Ihu shari chad vi chad. But he, Messiah, unties and ties his bandage one at a time. What does that mean? What does it mean everyone unbandages all of their bandages at once, but he does one at a time? Because he's always in a ready state. Someone who opens up all of his bandages has to reclose all of them in order to be able to get out there. But But Messiah... Messiah has to be ready to go at all moments, at all times. 
Therefore, he opens one, closes one, opens one, closes one, opens one, closes one. Learn the teachings of our sages, the commentaries on this Talmud. We'll explain what, what's the significance of all of these different pieces of the story. What does it mean they have these, these, uh, these ailments, these afflictions, these diseases that they're trying to cure? Commentaries go into that in great detail. Omar, for he says, Messiah says, Dilma mi boino. I might be needed at any moment. Deloi i akev, therefore I deal with my bandages in this way so that I will not be delayed even one moment. Also, Legabe, so Bishur Malevi, so now he has, he knows exactly where he needs to go, right? So Bishur Malevi goes now to see Mashiach. He goes to the gate of the city. He went to the he went to the Messiah. Amr Lay he says to him, Shalom Alech Rebbe Amari, peace be upon you, my master, my teacher. Amr Lay Messiah said to Rabbi Shalom Levi, Shalom Alecha Bar Levi, peace be upon you, the son of Levi. Right, his name was Rabbi Yeshua Ben Levi, Yeshua the son of Levi. Amr Lay Rabbi Shalom Levi asked him, Le Emas Osimar. When is the master coming? Omar Lay, Messiah answered to him, also Legabe, uh, sorry. When is the master coming? Omar Lay, Messiah answered him, Hayoim, today. I'm coming today. And what do we know? Mashiach didn't come that day. Right? Because we wouldn't be learning this Talmud if he had come already. Also Legabe, Elio. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi went back to Elijah the prophet. Amr Lehi, he said to him, My Amr Lach, no. What did Messiah tell you? Amr Lehi, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi responded to Elijah the prophet. Shalom Alecha Bar Levoi. He said, Peace be upon you, the son of Levi. Amr Lehi, Elijah said to, to Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Avtachach Lach Ula Avuch Ula Olme De Asi. He has assured you and your father that you are both destined to enter in the world to come. Amr Lehi, Rabbi Shua ben Levi, then said to Elijah, Shakuri koshakir be. He says, he lied to me. Elijah, listen here. Messiah didn't say the truth. Why? The Amr Lehi Masina, because he said, I am coming today. Vilayasa. And he did not come. Omar Lay, Elijah said to Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Hachi Omar Lay, Hachi Omar Lach. He says, this is what he was saying to you. But you didn't listen to what he said. He said, Hayoim, today. And you turned around and left. But he was saying a verse that you didn't hear the rest of it. Hayoim im bekoiloi tishmo. Today. If you heed my voice, and this is a verse from Deuteronomy, sorry, from Psalms 95, verse 7, where the verse states that if we heed the voice of Hashem, Mashiach will come today. But if we don't, we're going to have to wait. But what happened to Rabbi Shoban Levi? He goes over to me and says, hey, how are you? He says, Bar Levoi, oh, the son of the Levi, you're here. You should be blessed. He says, okay, new. Bottom line, when are you coming? When are you going to reveal yourself? And what does he say? Hayom, today. He says, thank you so much. Have a great day. Turns around and leaves. And then he says, that day, Mashiach didn't come. So he meets with Elijah the prophet subsequently and asks him, what's going on with your Mashiach fellow? He's not a man of truth. He says, no, 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 he is a man of truth. You just didn't listen to what he said, which is a little bit telling about our generation. People could be sitting on a television set and talking, and no one's listening. No one is listening. What does it mean no one's listening? He's saying, well, I have proof for something, and he just doesn't care about the proof. He says, I'm giving you first-hand evidence to, to something. I don't care. We know that someone could be guilty as sin. 
We have evidence of the guilt. We have the wire, the banking statements. We have the money coming in from Ukraine. We have, we know everything. It doesn't make a difference. Nobody's listening. Because everyone's just hayoim. They turn around and leave. I want what I want. I want to hear what I want to hear. And I don't listen for the remaining words. In Bekoyle Tishmo, if you listen to his, to his voice, if you heed the voice of Hashem, then indeed today, but the problem is no one's listening. And this is the challenge of our generation. Our generation, we need to learn to take in the messages. God is sending us messages every day. If October 7th is just an item in the news and doesn't change our lives, we're not listening to messages. If October 7th doesn't transform who we are, we're not getting the message. Yes, doctor. Correct. He was. Well, he is around today. The issue is that we're today not in a point, in a position, in a place where we're capable of communicating with Mashiach in that way. Today, so where was he? He was at the entrance of the city. Elijah told him exactly how to identify him. He says, go to the entrance of the city where all the homeless people are. And you'll see that there's, you know, everyone's there taking care of their bandages, taking care of their diseases, taking care of whatever the, their illness is. He says, but you'll see one individual doesn't take care of them all. He takes care of one at a time. That's your identifier. You'll know that that one is a Messiah. Well, he hasn't revealed himself then. He was present, but he hadn't revealed himself to the world. So as uh, just to give some clarification to this, my grandfather, a blessed memory, said to us on numerous occasions, he says, Mashiach, my grandmother said this to us all the time. She said, like, we'd come to the house. My grandmother, after my grandfather passed away, she's like, she would say, did you see Mashiach? I'm like, no. Safta, we didn't. Grandmother, we didn't see Messiah. She says, what do you mean? He's walking the streets. He's walking the streets. Open your eyes. You'll be able to see Mashiach. So, Mashiach is a human who has great powers, but is not revealing those powers till Hashem says he can. Mashiach doesn't have the right on their own will to reveal the greatness of Hashem to the world. The world has to be deserving, has to be the right point of time. And even then, like we said at the beginning of the Talmud, that's not the ideal. The ideal is that Mashiach should come not riding on a donkey, but rather in the clouds, a heavenly vision, not something which is so materialistic. It should be a, a powerful vision. And, I mean, we're getting more and more to a point where people can actually see miracles with their eyes. It's not something which is common. We typically don't see miracles so openly. You talk to some of the chayalim, to the soldiers in Gaza, and they tell you the miracles that they're seeing is unprecedented. It's unprecedented. The miracles that they're seeing, the open hand of Hashem, is just, I mean, the, breathtaking. So, but why is that happening? It's happening because hopefully we're getting to a point where we're, that clarity is going to come together and bring us a closeness with Hashem. So we have a physical way, and then we have a spiritual way. We have a physical way that we see the miracles in front of our eyes. It's like, we can't deny this. And soldiers who are going into battle, who may not have been observant or religious, are coming back saying, I want to put on tefillin every day. I want to keep Shabbos. I want to wear tzitzis. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to keep kosher. It's unbelievably powerful things. And this is the, 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 the time of unbelievable miracles. When we see these types of miracles, we have to get ready ourselves to be soldiers of Hashem as well and to be worthy of this, of this revelation. The Gemara relates another exchange concerning the time of Messiah's arrival. Shalu Talmidov es Rabbi Yosi ben Kisma. 
Rav Yosi ben Kisma was asked by his students, Amos I ben David Ba, when is the son of David coming? Omar, he answered, Misyora ni shema tevakshum imeni os. He says, I'm afraid that you're going to ask me for a sign. Omru lo, ain onu mevakshum chois. We're not going to ask you for a sign. You can tell us when he's going to come, but we're not going to ask you for a sign. Amr Allah, Amr Lahem, he said to them, Lekishiyipol hashara zev yibona. When this gate falls and is rebuilt, viyipol viyivne, and then falls a second time and is rebuilt, viyipol and falls a third time, vein must speak in livnosa ad sheben David ba. Then we will not have the chance to rebuild it before the son of David comes. Amr lo, they said to him, Rabbeinu, Tenlin Oos, <laughs> our teacher, actually, at second thought, give us a sign. They, they promised that they wouldn't ask for a sign, and now they're asking for a sign. Amar, Amru Lo, they said to him, V'afal Pikain, even so, one second, sorry, Rabbeinu, Tenlin Oos, Rabbeinu, our teacher, give us a sign. Amar Lahem, he said to them, V'lo kach amartem li she'ein atem evakshim eni Oos, but did you tell not tell me? Did you not tell me that you would not ask me for a sign? Amrulo, they said to him, even so, Amr Lahem, he said to them, Im Kain Yehovhu me meoras Pamyas Ladam. If so, may the waters of the cave of Pamyas turn into blood. Vinefhuladam. And indeed, they turned into blood. I don't know the, the, I don't understand the significance of this. But what is this uh, gate that falls and keeps on being rebuilt? It's the gate of Rome. Rabbi Yossi ben Kisma was visiting Rome at the time. And he was showing them, you see this gate? When this gate falls and gets rebuilt, when this gate falls again and gets rebuilt, and it falls a third time, and then Mashiach ben David will rebuild it. He says, since you asked me, you insist on a sign, I'll give you a sign. Okay. Rabbi Yossi ben Kisma gives another prediction concerning the advent of the Messianic era. Bishasp Tiroso Omar Lahen. At the time of his death, he said to those who were present, Hamiku li aroini. He says, put my coffin deep in the ground. Okay. Now we're on 98B. She'ein kol dekel v'dekel she'bibavel she'ein sus shel parasim nikshabo. Because there will not be a single palm in Babylonia to which a horse of the Persians will not be tethered. Ve'ein l'cha kol oroin v'oroin she'be'eret Yisrael and there will not be a single coffin in the land of Israel out of which a horse of the Medes will not be eating straw. The army of Persia and Media will vanquish Babylonia before proceeding to conquer Eretz Yisrael in the war of Gogomagog. Their cavalry will be so immense that it will fill the entire country of Babylonia. In Eretz Yisrael, coffins will be dug up from the ground for use as feeding troughs for their horses. Wow. So the Gemara now continues to talk about this war of Gogo Magog and the, uh, the troubles that are going to befall the Jewish people. And this is relating, I think, a lot to the wars that we're seeing now going on. You have the Houthis in the south of Israel, Yemen, the Yemen uh, rebels. You have Hezbollah shooting at Israel from the north. You have Gaza from within. You have the, in Judea and Samaria, also from within. And now they have things happening from Syria. And you have things happening from Iraq and from Iran. And who knows, maybe they'll even be from Jordan. Then maybe they'll jump into the party against the Jews. And maybe the Egyptians will also do that. 
Iran is Persia, correct. Iran is, that's correct. So this prediction, so this prediction is, is not, it's not a game. Yep. And the next week, God willing, we're going to continue talking about the, the pangs of Mashiach, the terrible pain that the world will have to endure during the time preceding the coming and revelation of Messiah. So my dear friends, have a magnificent Shabbos. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry that I was, I'm a little bit tired, but you understand. It's been a long, fabulous week. Not much sleep. So have a great Shabbos, and I look forward to continuing, God willing, next week with great strength and great clarity, hopefully. Hashem will bless us. Thank you and good Shabbos.